All right, folks, here's my Savage Axis 308. And as you can plainly see, I made my choice for a inexpensive optic to put on this thing. And the reason I picked this optic was I just wanted to try it out. I looked at a lot of the other different optics out there, the mill dot optics, and I still plan on getting a mill dot optic for the M1A. And I'll probably uh, get one of those SS optics that everybody's talking about, the uh, fixed 10 power SS optics. And uh, I'm leaning towards that, so we'll see how that goes, but that's gonna be at a later date. But for right now, this guy, let me move the camera just a little bit so you can see it a little better. This is the Vortex Diamondback. And this is a four to 12 by 40 millimeter. You can see it right there. I have the standard uh, weaver rings on it. Well, they are the high mount uh, weaver rings, but uh, just standard rings. The rail that was already on the rifle is a 20 MOA rail. And uh, you can see on the optic itself, sorry for moving the camera around so much, I have the Vortex 1 inch anti cant device. And I've talked to you before about the anti cant devices and why I think they're important. This whole rig right here. You're probably looking at right around $650 on average to get it set up just like this. And of course, it's going to depend on your area. Some areas it might be a little bit more, some areas you might get some good deals and it'll be a little bit less. Um, this Vortex Diamondback has what uh, Vortex calls the, den ho the Dead Hold BDC Reticle. Basically, all it is is a BDC reticle and... Um, I kind of like the BDC reticles. Some people don't. I kind of like them. I like shooting with them. And uh, no, don't get me wrong, just because I have BDC reticles doesn't mean I'm never going to get like a uh, mill dot or anything like that. Yes, I'm going to get a mill dot scope in the future. Again, like I said, probably for the M1A and uh, in the future when I start my actual rifle build. I'm going to start a rifle build that's going to be an XLR, an extreme long range. Uh, build and that's going to be more of an expensive endeavor so that's going to be something where I'll have to buy a part save up buy another part or if anything I'll buy a good base rifle first and then I'll just have to save up for a while and get a uh, more high-end optic and I'm talking like uh, you know Leupold, Zeiss, Schmidt and Bender, uh, Night Force, something like that and the rifle will either be uh, 300 Win Mag or it'll be something in the 338, uh, possibly even a different caliber. But that's in the future. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes once I get to that point. But this optic right here for this rig, I think it's a good match. The BDC reticle is a very utilitarian reticle, uh, much like the mill dot, and you can tune it up to fit your loads. So I'm going to do some shooting with it. Here in the near future, I'm going to get it zeroed at 100. I'll probably uh, video that. Once I get it zeroed at 100, I'll do an initial shot group probably, kind of show you the zero, and then uh, uh, I'll go from there. If I'm going to shoot longer ranges with the BDC reticle, what I'm going to have to do is I'll probably end up zeroing it at 300 at a very, bit, at a very minimum. And even at 100 with the 20 MOA rail, you're kind of running into the upper end of the adjustment on your elevation on a scope. That's kind of the purpose of a 20 MOA rail. And so it gives you that extra adjustment at longer ranges. So um, I'll probably end up in the end sighting it in for a zero at 300. And then I'll have to calculate on the BDC from 300 on down, uh, you know, what the different uh, holdovers are going to uh, stand for. So, all right, there it is in a nutshell. Again, this is a good, basic $650 rig. Very capable one, too. I've already shown how accurate these Savage Axis rifles are. This one's going to be no exception. 308 is an awesome round. And then, of course, got my little signature there. Black Hawk uh, sleeve to hold some rounds. It can hold nine. I always just put five in there. It's just my preference. But there it is. All of its glory, a very nice, accurate 
little budget setup. And I really look forward to shooting this thing and making a decent amount of videos with it. So all right, if you got any questions on this rifle that I haven't talked about already, feel free to leave a comment. If you have your own Savage, of course, as always, put up a video response. I'll accept. And thanks a lot for watching.